31. Just missed it. All right. So, um, <laughs> uh, well, that's different than normal, right? Usually, I start with OK, um, or with some sort of loud noise like that. All right. Um, yeah. All right. So now we're going to talk about uh, some ways to use the ideal gas equation. Um, again, we learned all this last year, so this is not not all that new. I almost feel like this unit is too easy, and I need to figure out a way to make it harder. <laughs> no? Okay. All right. Um, so, actually, it does get a little bit tougher once we get into stoichiometry. Then that's what that's kind of what they save their hard questions for on the AP exam is for the <laughs> never going to live that down. All right. So, and those of you who are watching the video will never know what I'm not going to live down because you didn't hear. Um, so, basically, you can just mess with the ideal gas equation, all right, do some manipulation, and you can figure out how to solve for molar mass, how to solve for density, those sorts of things. Um, so, moles, if we say that moles is equal to, um, or actually, I guess, saying that a little bit differently, the mass is equal to moles times the molar mass, um, then you can rearrange that, solve for moles. Um, or the way they're doing it is multiplying both sides by the molecular mass. What are they doing? If that works, that's not the way I would go about that. Um, I would solve for n. We solve for n. n is equal to um, m over m, <laughs> right? Those are different. Uh, that's little m and big M. And so then you take that and you plug it in. If you plug that into PV equals NRT, then you end up with uh, PV equals MRT over big M. Okay, and then you can kind of rearrange it, and you eventually end up with the same thing here. But what they're showing you, they're, they're going for density right away, okay? Because mass divided by volume is density, right? So essentially density is equal to pressure times the molar mass over the R times temperature, okay? We learned a mnemonic for these last year. It's going to serve you well because I looked yesterday and um, these equations are not on your AP equation sheet. Um, do you remember the mnemonics that we learned? Okay, I'll write out the formulas the way that you're used to seeing them. Um, Nobody? Did I teach this to you last year? Maybe I didn't teach this to you last year. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. You know it, because I definitely teach it in AP chemistry. Um, so this is molar mass, okay? MRT over PV, that's one, uh, that's one derivation of this equation if, you've, you know, if you're solving for molar mass. This one, if you've got density given to you in the problem instead of a mass and a volume, then... Um, so basically, the two different uh, mnemonics <laughs> here. I don't know why I'm reluctant to say this on a video. It's okay. It's, it's all for science, right? So this is Mr. T poops violently. <laughs> Did we not talk about that last year? Oh, okay. You okay? I don't. You don't remember? How would you not remember that? I don't. Huh? Okay. And then Dr. T poops. All right. So MRT PV. Mr. T poops violently. Okay. Then he's calmed down a little bit, you know, he's gotten his doctorate, and so now he's Dr. T and he just poops, okay? So, there you go. <laughs> That's how you can remember that, all right? So, uh, yeah, that'll help you, because those, like I said, those equations are not on the AP exam, and you can derive these from PV equals NRT, but who has time for that when you're taking an AP exam, right? It's better if you just can, uh, although... You know, remembering this mnemonic may just make you start laughing in your head, and then you're thinking about, I pity the fool, and then, you know, you're completely distracted anyway. So I don't know which is better, but um, this will be faster, hopefully. <clears throat> so, um, to calculate the density of a gas, the things you need to know are the pressure, the molar mass, and the temperature of the gas, and then you can calculate the density of it, okay? Okay. Um, 
And I guess that's all I really need to say about that equation. Um, <coughs> so again, this is, you know, arranged a little bit differently, but once you rearrange it to solve for molar mass, Dr. T poops, DRT over P. Okay? Uh, did you, is that too fast? You good? All right, so then if we're doing a sample problem, you might be asked a problem like, what is the density of carbon tetrachloride at 714 torr and 125 degrees Celsius? But again, at this point, it's just plugging and chugging, right? Um, so you just, the one thing that you need to know that they don't actually give you a value for is the molar mass of carbon tetrachloride. So hopefully you remember how to write your formulas. Okay, just find the molar mass of CCL4, and then you just plug it into the equation. Um, and actually, see, I have trouble remembering the equation unless I write it this way. <laughs> and then if you want to, you can plug in all the numbers and then solve for the D, or you can solve for the D first, um, which your density ends up being P times M over R times D. Um, oh. This is another one. If you want something where you're solving for density, if you do MP over RT, um, the military police uh, at the riot, I don't know. That might work. Someone, someone came up with that last year because they wanted one that, uh, where you actually had the density as the thing that you were solving for. So, Again, these things can be manipulated and you can solve them however you want. but. Um, <laughs> Multiplayer what? Rumble. Rumble train. Rumble train. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, it's funny the things that will pop in your head when you're trying to make a mnemonic. Um. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, and then you just basically plug everything in. Your molar mass, just calculate the molar mass of the carbon tetrachloride. Your pressure is 714 torr. Because it's in torr, you would need to make sure you're using the right R. The R that uh, is in TOR, I believe, is 62.4. Um, and then your temperature, you'd have to change to Kelvin. All right? Once you plug all that in, you can find the density. And it's, I mean, these are not difficult. It's just plugging in. Uh, the, OK, the values of R are on your equation sheet, yes. You don't have to memorize those. All right, another sample problem. Is there anything weird about this one? I'm going to skip that for now. If we have time, maybe I'll come back to it. But um, I just want to get through the basic information. Okay, and then the other, the other thing, and I believe this is 10.6. I could be wrong. 10.6 might be partial pressures. Actually, now that I think about it, I think 10.6 is partial pressures. Yeah, to make sure. Okay, so 10.5 is still, is this stoichiometry? Where is stoichiometry? I guess it's somewhere mixed in with 10.5 and 10.6. I don't know. Um, yeah, it's in, it looks like it's in 10.5. Um, all right, so you've got something like this, OK? You've got the airbag in an automobile. And uh, you know the airbag has a volume of 36 liters. And it needs to be filled with nitrogen gas at a pressure of 1.15 atmospheres at a temperature of 26 degrees Celsius. So we need to know how much NaN3 do we need to use initially. And this is, you know, this is actually a very practical question that someone had to figure out at some point because um, if you overfill the airbag, uh, too much pressure will pop it. And that's really hot gas and that will burn people. That's happened before, okay? So you have to be, you know, you have to be very precise with your measurements here. Make sure you get the right amount of uh, NaN3 in the airbag. Um, so that, uh, is basically, it's a combination of a stoichiometry and a PV equals NRT. You guys remember those from last year? So you have, um, you may have to do stoichiometry first and then plug that into PV equals NRT. And the reason that that happens is because obviously with PV equals NRT, this is moles, right? So because we have moles in this uh, question, then oftentimes they like to ask you a question we have to figure out the number of moles of something that's produced and then figure out the volume from there, okay? Um, so on this one, 
uh, we would probably would we start with TV equals NRT or would we start with stoichiometry on this one? Just talk about the strategy here. I would start with TV equals NRT, right? Figure out the number of moles of uh, of the gas that we need first. Okay, and then you can use stoichiometry to figure out the number of moles of Na in three, and then you can figure out the grams from there. Okay. Again, I'm not going to actually go through the problem just because we're going through a, you know, I'm trying to get through all of this and make sure we talk about all of it. But does that make sense as far as the strategy there? So you start with PV equals NRT. Here's your pressure. Here's your volume. Here's your temperature. You need to change that into Kelvin. Solve for N. Once you have your N, that's going to give you the moles of uh, nitrogen, okay, because it's supposed to be filled with nitrogen gas, so that's going to give you the moles of N2. You can use the stoichiometry and the equation to figure out the moles of the NaN3 and then go to grams, okay? All right, partial pressure. Um, this is the one that I think uh, was commented on a couple years ago. Um, I can't mention names on the video, but uh, someone came up with their law of uh, additive volumes <laughs> as a response to Dalton's law of partial pressure. Because, um, and it's not, you know, it wasn't quite as simple as it seems. I mean, Dalton basically said if you add the pressures of two gases together, it will equal the total pressure. That seems fairly obvious when I say that, right? The thing is, Dalton had to realize that it doesn't really matter what gases you're dealing with, um, they don't really have any significant interactions with one another, so they don't affect one another when you mix them, okay? And so, um, basically, if you took, you know, the pressures of each of them individually, you add those up, that's going to equal the total pressure when you do actually put them together, okay? So they, what he's basically saying there is the two gases really don't influence one another, Okay, they just kind of do what they were doing before, and then you just add the pressures together. Um, so the other way to put that, and this one is on your equation sheet, okay, which, thanks for that. P total equals P1 plus P2 plus P3 plus, you know, whatever. <laughs> so as if you couldn't have figured that one out on your own, but you know, we'll give you that one. We won't give you Dr. T poops, right? Um, so sample problem there kind of thing you might get, a gas mixture made from 6 grams of oxygen and 9 grams of CH4 is placed in a 15 liter vessel. What is the partial pressure of each gas and what's the total pressure? Um, so basically this one, um, we're going to do TV equals NRT twice, I think. Um, we've got masses here and we've got a volume and we've got a temperature, okay? So using that, we can figure out the pressure of each gas, right? Does that make sense? If you do PV equals NRT, we can figure out the moles of oxygen first just by using the 6 grams of oxygen, convert that to moles. So now we have this, okay? We have the temperature. You've got to change 0 Celsius into Kelvin. We've got the volume, which is right here, 15.0 liters. So you can use that to solve for pressure, okay? Then do the same thing again for the uh, CH4. And the only thing that's really going to be different with the CH4 is the, the number of moles that you have, okay? So then you can figure both those out individually. That will give you the two pressures, and then you just add them together to find the total pressure, okay? Still pretty simple, right? I mean, there's nothing real difficult here. Uh, now, this is the part that I'm not sure if we went over this last year or not. Mole fractions. Did we talk about mole fractions last year? You know, I think that was literally the last thing we did, if I remember correctly. We talked about um, how to measure concentrations, moles per liter. We talked about how to do molality, which I was setting you up for colligative properties, and then they took that out of the AP uh, exam. So you don't need to know molality anymore. They specifically said that. Um, this you might still see, though, okay, the mole fraction thing. They put some stuff in, too. I mean, it's all, I feel like it's there. Um, nope, that's not what I meant. Um, so in order to find the, um, the mole fraction of something, I mean, this is basically just like a percentage, except without the times 100 part at the end, okay? So 
if you want a mole fraction of a certain element in a compound or a certain compound in a mixture, then you just find the number of moles of whatever you're looking for, find the total number of moles, divide those two, and that'll give you, it'll give you a decimal number. Okay, it should be less than one, should be greater than zero. Um, and that is related to its pressure, and it looks like this got cut off. I'm not sure what happened there. Um, but let's just look at an example. So a study of the effects of certain gases on plant growth required a synthetic atmosphere. So it's telling you the number of moles of each that you have, okay? And then it's asking you to calculate the partial pressure of O2 in the mixture if the total pressure is 745 torr. Now this is probably what got cut off of that other slide. But you have an equation on your equation sheet. Um, that basically says the partial pressure, the pressure, I think the way they word it is the pressure of A, like we're talking about gas A, is equal to the total pressure um, times the mole fraction of A. X stands for the mole fraction, okay? So basically you multiply the total pressure by the mole fraction of whatever gas you're trying to find and that will give you the, the pressure of just that gas, okay? So for example on this one, why do they say 1.5 mole percent CO2? That's weird. I've never seen that before. Anyway, yeah, so you, you basically add up the number of moles that you have total here, right? So if we're trying to find the mole fraction of CO2, actually, I guess they're asking for O2. Um, so you put 18 at the top, right? 18.0 divided by um, the total. <laughs> Math. Okay, 82, I can do this. Oh, 100. What's that? Oh, because it's a percentage. I'm an idiot. Yeah. All right, so 100.0, right? So basically it's 18% oxygen. What? Yeah, you just multiply uh, total pressure times Yeah. So it's it's 18%, but in mole fraction terms, it would be 0.18, right? Because we're doing it as a decimal. So then what you would do is you would plug that in for your x here, okay, and then just multiply that by the total pressure, which is 745 torr, and that would give you the pressure of your oxygen gas, okay? Does that make sense? And again, you have this equation on your equation sheet, so I don't think those are too difficult either. Um, what else? Study the effects of certain gases. Oh, it's the same thing, okay. This atmosphere is to be held in 120 liter space at 295K. How many moles of O2 are needed? Okay, so then once we know the, um, the partial pressure of the oxygen, okay, and they give you some of the other information here, they give you volume, they give you temperature, then you should be able to figure out the number of moles, okay? Uh, collecting gases over water. This is actually related to the lab we did today, okay? Um, so water evaporates, obviously, all right? And uh, because we were collecting a gas over water, we were collecting the butane gas over water, um, there's going to be a little bit of water vapor pressure there, okay? And that's why we looked on that table. We needed to see at this temperature what is the vapor pressure of water because that needs to be taken into account when you're making your calculations, okay? So all you have to do, if you're trying to find, if you know the total pressure um, and you know that the water vapor is in there, then you just subtract the water vapor pressure from the total and that will give you the pressure of the gas that you actually care about, which in our case today was the butane, right? So fairly simple, I think. Um, there's a setup kind of like what we did, except you didn't have fancy tubes. You just had to stick your hand under the water. <laughs> um, Sorry, I couldn't figure out a way to connect a tube from a lighter to, uh, you know, to a tube under a graduated cylinder. But anyway, um, not much different about this problem except for um, they give you 765 torr of total pressure, all right? And then they give you the vapor pressure of the water. 25 torr. So then before you start the rest of the problem, you just have to subtract 25 from 765, and then you would use that value um, when you do your PV equals NRT, okay? So you just 
kind of have to watch out for that. If they say a gas is being collected over water, and especially if they give you the vapor pressure of water, you probably need to use it, okay? And you just need to subtract from the total pressure. Um, so I think that's pretty much it for this stuff. Another sample problem. Yeah, and then we get into kinetic molecular theory. So that'll be next time. Uh, see you in class.